We are live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am one of your co-hosts, Blake Rafino. Alongside me is my counterpart, Joe DeLeon. Good evening, sir. How are we tonight? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm a, I'm a little bit riled up, though, Blake. I'm a little riled up reading through this this pe- this this weird essay that was produced by the AAC commissioner. And I know that we're going to get to that at the end of the show, but I'm a little little riled up after reading this. I read all 2,857 words today. I'm sorry you wasted your time doing that, by the well, way. Well, well, listen. Early in my career, mm-hmm. okay, I called out. I forget who it was at the time. I think the Pac-12 or Big 12 commissioner. And I read like the first two paragraphs. And I made an assumption, okay? And I wind up being wrong. And so from that six years ago, I made a vow. Like if I'm going to rip up on somebody, I better have all the facts um, so that I know. But I had, but here's the thing though. A- AAC commissioner Mike Oresco, I have no idea what he's talking about. Like I, I get the premise of what he's trying to say, yeah. but I have no idea. He thinks that there shouldn't be a power five, which quite honestly, I agree with him. If you're going to go to a 12 team playoff, but saying things like it, the media is the one who came up with the power five. No, we didn't. Right. But I, there's a lot of other issues too with the whole premise that I don't disagree in what you're talking about. And I, I, again, I know that we're going to get to at the end of the show, but to have that thought of to separate the conferences in the way that it's been separated, maybe the argument could be made, but at the same time, there's better, better football teams and there's worse football teams. There has to be a level of separation somewhere. I I agree. I agree. And well, but now, Joe, there kind of isn't, right? Because the highest group of five, let you know, G5 team, will get into this playoff, and they're gonna, they're really gonna get their rear ends torn up. No pause. Absolutely. I'm, Absolutely. Talking about, I'm talking about they're gonna get beat down. I mean, look, I, I know I joke about this all the time, but I'm not joking when I say this. Mm-hmm. What happens when Tulane? What? But by the way, did did I mention? Two lanes getting a little some looks to move up to move up where ACC Pac 12. What? Yeah, Pac 12. So and again, this is all funnels into the same talking point, though. Is you can't even keep your same teams in your conference and you're complaining about phrasing. Yeah. And so I'm going to throw a little bit of a wrench into what he's saying. I think that, yeah. Basically, what he's trying to say is teams are trying to pluck teams out of our conference. Well, they're going to. But nevertheless, I, I do believe that there are some things that he says, oh, mm-hmm. that aren't wrong. But when we talk about the Power Five and G5, the G5 team getting in, I know – I mean, look what Georgia did to TCU. Do you think it gets any easier when Georgia is playing Rudy Poo State? I mean, Joe, Tulane's going to get their ass. Look, Tulane beats USC. Do you not believe that USC gets dominated by Georgia? They absolutely do. Come on, man. They absolutely do. Bigger fish eat slightly smaller fish, which eats even smaller fish. There is a chain to the level of competition and success. So go ahead. Complain about the wording. I just think it's, it's – this is a nothing essay. This does nothing for me that I have pulled up in front of me, and then I have spent time reading parts of it. I just – this doesn't solve any problems. It's just bemoaning that you're not considered good enough to be in the top conversation, which you've never been close to being in that conversation. Agreed. We'll also mention at the top of the show, we'll talk about our top five running backs in the and in the, in all of college football. We have a lot of the same guys again. Yep. Uh, one, we don't, which I think is – Absolutely ridiculous that y- you left the guy out, but nevertheless, we'll, we'll talk. I, about I, I, I'm the opposite here. I, I think that you leaving off the guy that I included is is pretty ridiculous, but we'll get to it. Can he ever go through a season healthy? Oh, that's this right. Can. He's never done it. Donovan Edward. Okay, well, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. 
Okay, sounds good. All right, <laughs> also, we'll talk about Georgia getting the invite to the White House and them declining. Yeah. Such pettiness by both sides, to be honest with you. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll touch on that as well. But we do have some comments. Uh, Roderick says, Blake, did you see what I mentioned you on in on Twitter? I did not re tag me because I did not see it. Uh, Colin says, did I rile Joe up today? No, uh, Colin did not. Liberty fans did rile me up a little bit, which is of all fan bases. Liberty get- fans, they have fans. Apparently, I was actually really shocked with the with the feedback on a, a conference USA preview I posted today. Uh, some of them liked it, some of them did not. But Colin, no, you did not rile me up. Rile me up today. Dwayne says, "What's up, Blake? And what's up to Joe? What's happening with you, Dwayne? Um, and Ryan, Big Cajonas Kelly, which I said something to Joe before the show, which we're we're not going to mention right now." No. Uh, but he but he says Geo, geographically and logistically it's crazy, not any more crazier than teams in South Carolina, uh, South Cal- Southern California, going to play in Ohio in December. It's not. Um. Yes and no, because having Oregon go all the way to Louisiana, I don't know what the geographic mileage difference is between those two trips, but. I would argue that's a little, just a little bit crazier, not significantly. You're already on the plane anyway. What's an extra hour? It's <laughs> a good point. I, I mean, I'm just being honest. I mean, but getting equipment there and things like that, that, that is obviously a right. very big deal. So let's get, let's get this thing started. Let's get this thing rolling. Everybody do us a favor by hitting the like and share, share to all of the social media groups. If you're listening to us on Facebook, all of those social media groups, LSU, Notre Dame, SEC, Big Ten, share to them all because we're going to talk about them all here tonight, at least a player in all of those major conferences. If you're listening to us on YouTube, like, subscribe, notification bell, wherever you listen to podcasts, rate and review and subscribe as well. All right, let's talk about our good friends over at betonline.ag. We're back very soon. We're going to talk about some Georgia pettiness on all sides. Mm. Talk about our top, top running backs in the league. When we return, Ben Online is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events with the first to market odds in lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. Ben Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live in-game betting props and futures head on over to bet online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet use our promo code believe 50 that's believe 50 b-l-e-a-v five zero to receive your 50 percent off welcome bonus on your first deposit that's betonline.ag betonline.ag we're back Unlike no, not. university, which, by the way, did you see that Urban Meyer said? That yeah, I'm surprised said, we didn't react to that. I'm surprised that we well, didn't. Let's, really quickly, let's react to it now. In case you missed it, and you can mm. clip this if you want because this is ridiculous. Urban Meyer came out and said that he believes that the University of Texas could have the best overall roster in the country. Where? There's holes on their defensive line. There's holes at linebacker in the secondary, at running back now that that Bijan's gone. I I don't see where offensive line and receiver. Yes, sure. No, there are multiple SEC teams that we can sit here, and I, I don't want to waste our time rattling them off. But there are multiple in one conference alone that are significantly more well-rounded than Texas. Or I don't know what Urban's looking at. Clearly, he didn't even look at the roster, and he just made a blanket statement. Well, he knows what he's doing because it gets a lot of the fan base around Texas. And yeah. let me tell you what I let me tell you what I think too. Urban's very calculated human being. If he ever wanted to come back and Sarkeesian failed, <clears throat> Texas, oh, Texas could, call. Texas could be a place that he could enter. But let me just say this about Urban. What are you talking about, bud? Like what what are you t- where? Ne- where? Now, 
I, what maybe what he's doing is looking at recruiting rankings. I, I don't know. But here's the bottom line. I'm pretty sure I can name 20 starting quarterbacks in college football better than Quinn Ewers. I, I will agree with that statement. I, I had so, to think on it. And I will agree with that statement. But yes. Buddy, uh, Joe, if they if they were in the SEC this year and seven next year, they would be lucky to go seven and five, eight and four. Yeah. And again, that's my whole point here is that they're they've got the best roster maybe in the Big 12. Is that what he meant to say? And he got ahead of himself and he well he spoke here's, too an soon? here's an interesting part about that though. He might not be wrong because there, are, like our friends over at Bet Online, DraftKings, wherever you place your bets, you know that you need to be placing them. By the way, at Bet Online. But what's interesting? What's interesting though, Joe, when you do look at this over under win total, they are at ten and a half. Them and Oklahoma are at ten and a half. So, how many times have we done this? How many times have we given? Texas a 10 and a half point or 10 and a half game over under like I feel like we do this every year well, I we have do- not get I have not given them anything I'm just I right. am just simply saying that th- th- they have it you know whether it's right or wrong it's still there now I would pick the under but yes. you know what else I also don't think t- I also don't think Oklahoma should be at 10 and a half or wherever no. they were so no we'll see Urban Meyer don't be a Rudy Poo. You were doing fine at Ohio State, and when you were at bars, putting your thumb up people's buttholes. That's all. That's all, <laughs> all right. Very quickly in reacting to this, massive news coming out of Georgia. Georgia's not going to the White House for the visit. They have not been, I might add. They have not been mm-hmm. to a White House, um, What I guess, ceremony or whatever you want want to call it recognition recognition maybe? yeah i mean they get everybody knows what this is you give the president a uh a jersey with his the presidential number on it yeah i think what is he for the 46th president yeah the excuse or reasoning that georgia gave was is that they could not go on the date that president biden's cabinet gave them and wanted to reschedule to a different date Allegedly, through Georgia, the White House said, no, either you come to on this day or you don't come at all. And Kirby said, well, then I'm not coming. Then we're not going. I don't want to make this any more political than what it already is going to be. be mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't really care either way. Is it tradition? Yes. Have teams not gone before? Yes. I, I, it doesn't bother me any way, either way. I think it's definitely pettiness on both sides. Agreed. I I lean in favor of Georgia because like to invite these guys out this late in May, and I don't know, admittedly, the timeline for how quickly you're supposed to get a championship team out to the White House. Just for an example, just for an example, okay? Like when did LSU go? Well, LSU was the last team that went. They went in they went in late January. Oh, okay. Then that that's I fully side with Georgia. You don't here. remember they were in that White House? Get the gas. Yes. Get the I didn't remember it was January, though. I didn't know that that was January. So that that's... I mean, maybe Pooh Bear can maybe Pooh Bear can tell me if I'm wrong. But it was it was early. Like Burrow was there. The draft hadn't happened. I mean, this is a right. really late process. And, and look, Joe, for what it's worth, they have fumbled the outright bag at the White House at getting these teams in there. Right. Yeah. Like, the, this current administration has not made much of an effort. So, like, that's my point here is that after now recognizing that, that is 100% on the White House. I side with Georgia. Absolutely. To then invite them in the middle of when finals are wrapping up and then also when other guys are trying to go home after finals before they have to come right back for summer workouts and then to have the, the gall to say, no, we're not changing the date. I think that's ridiculous. But it's all the same times. Who cares? You won a national championship. You don't win the national championship to go to the White House. You win the national championship to win a national championship and to be the best damn college football team in the country. Well, and and listen, they like we remember this whole Caitlin Clark, LSU, Iowa situation. Okay. Uh, Jill Biden invited both teams. Now LSU is going. That was ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Look, 
I agree with this premise, and this is how I live my life, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just how I was raised. It was how I was told to be raised. Treat everybody the way that you want to be treated, okay? Everybody is equal. That's what the, the thing that I believe the most and the religion or the God that I believe in tells me that everyone is created equal, okay? Not everybody's created equal in all things, though. Sports is one of them. If you beat somebody, you have that right and privilege if you're going to get invited. They yeah. just – this ha – this this and look, it, it's not like presidents haven't done it before. I mean, for crying out loud, Trump gave people McDonald's. Remember <laughs> the whole Clemson thing where he was giving people McDonald's? He yes, got, I remember that. One player, what was it – Um. At Clemson, I, I forget the player. I, I think it was one of the D linemen or O linemen. I think. Yeah, I remember it was the same D lineman that stuck his finger in that dude's butt against Ohio State. You remember what you, Dexter Lawrence? I think. It's, oh, it was, was it? Was it Dexter Lawrence? Yeah, it was Dexter Lawrence. And he was talking about. He was like, "This is bomb. They got McFlurries, and you can't even get <laughs> McFlurry at a normal McDonald's." And I'm uh, like, "So, look, and, and look, we've made movies about this, Joe. Remember yeah. when Forrest Gump?" Had 26 Dr. Peppers at the White House. I, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's just so petty to me. It's the most pettiest thing that I've seen on both sides. And and look, it's not – and I get where George is coming from. I mean, yeah. this is May the 10th. They're asking him to come out in May 26th. By the way, you know who goes out May 26th? LSU women's basketball. So – why would you go the week before summer camp even starts anyway? Like, I, I don't get that. Yeah, and I that's where I'm at. And, like, again, there's no political way to even look at this. I think it's just – it's disrespectful by the White House to invite them this late and on that timeline. Let these guys go home. I, I'm with Kirby. I'm not going. Why the hell would I waste my time going all the way out to the White House? And most, most of those guys don't really care about being there. It's not like professional athletes where – it might be a privilege to them. It might be an honor to them to be at the White House. And some people even use that as an opportunity. But oh, you can't be a 19-year-old. You just want to go sit at home with your boys before you have to come back for, for summer conditioning. I, I wouldn't want to go to the White House. That's a waste of time. Well, let me just tell you this. I would. I don't care who oh. the president is. I, look, just being real, I don't care if it's Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, Biden. They are the president of the United States. And I will, I will just say this. If the president of the United States invites me to go to the White House, I'd be like, tell me when, big dog. Because daddy going to be there. I, I yeah, don't care. I, you I think I, even I, as a 19-year-old, you'd be like, I'm excited to go to the White House? You'd be Yeah, I, I, I would. I mean, it's on my bucket list. Like, I want to go inside the White House. Like, I, I, I want to, you know, like, it, Joe, I mean, we live in a country where – that is the highest office in the in the land, right? right. Like regardless of what you were po politics are, presidents sit there. Like your right. leader sits there. So, all right, we spent too much time on it. All right, you want to get to this running back? This running hell back? yes. Okay, hell let's yes. go. You want to go first? You want to? You want to? You want to say your top five first? What do you want to do here? Yeah, let me let me pull mine out first. We'll we'll we'll, well change don't up pull, the order. Don't pull yours out first. It's not a it's not a measuring contest. Pause. Okay. Uh, well, I will say by the way. Uh, I was putting this list together and I was thinking to myself, you shot down doing 10. We could have gone with 10. There, there right, are enough, right, let me just say this. There are enough good running backs. That we we could have gone 10. We could have gone 10. This is on me. We could have gone 10, but nevertheless, five is five, five is fine. So who are your yeah. top five? All right. So I went with Blake Corum from Michigan at number one, Quinshawn Judkins, number two from Old Miss. Will Shipley from Clemson at number three. Oh, Raheem Lord. Rocket Sanders at number four from Arkansas. And then Nick Singleton at number five from Penn State. So, Blake, I know what you're going to bring up first. What is it? That I didn't include Donovan Edwards. Uh, yeah. Uh, why Will Shipley? Will Shipley is so freaking fun to watch. And he is – a major reason why they watch does not make you the top five best. Well, statistically, if we're going to talk about this, just from okay. a statistical standpoint, okay. he was one of the top performers in rushing touchdowns, third with 15. He was also one of the top running backs in just total yardage, one of the top receiving running backs in the country, the second most receiving yards with 242. And my main reasoning is 
watching enough of Clemson last year because we were forced to believe that they were a good football team for most of the football season. DJ Uwe Unga, they like, were a good stunk. team. They were a good team. They were competitive. But what kept them competitive offensively was Will Shipley. I, he is legitimately a guy who can take the ball to the house on any play. He's got good speed. He's got good athleticism. But what I love about Will Shipley is this dude runs hard. He, he is so fun to watch for that reason that he runs pissed off. He's running through people. I, I think he's got the frame to take on a lot of carries and to be one of the most productive running backs in college football this upcoming season after being one of the most productive running backs last season. We speak a ton on this show about how Riley is going to help Cade Klubnick take that next step. Let's also look what he did with Kendra Miller last year, who was a, was an okay average running back who was one of the best Fair running backs in the Fair country. Point. I think Fair Shipley point. takes that next step. All right, here's where I have Donovan Edwards in there above Shipley. I just think he's better. Like, I, I think overall he's a better back. Here's my reasoning. So, Michigan with Blake Corum, both of our top two backs, okay? Yeah. Buddy, without Donovan Edwards, th they are lost. And not only are they lost, Michigan could not get anything going offensively against TCU until, wait for it, Donovan Edwards start, had to start going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. My point is, is I don't care about the yards with Donovan Edwards. I don't care that he ran for damn near 1,000 yards. I don't care that he had seven touchdowns. I don't care that he's one of the best receiving backs out of the backfield as well. My whole thing is, is when, the, when he was placed in to become the starter, when Blake Corum went down, Joe, they look different. Offensively, they look different. Now, they averaged 40 points, over 40 points when Donovan Edwards was in the game, okay, as a starter. Not with Blake Corum. And that, that's not a slight on Blake Corum. When Donovan Edwards comes into a game, he just has a different it factor about him. Joe, he's big enough. He breaks mm. tackles. He's got good, really damn good speed. And it's something to be said when your offense is more dynamic when a running back's in there. We talk about Bijan. We talk about Gibbs. We talked about all these guys last year that were really, really good running backs. My thing with Donovan Edwards, if you turn on – so I have, the, I have the privilege of knowing a lot of people that coach because I've been in that world, been a part of it. I asked a buddy of mine who's a GA – at Ohio State, I was like, so what happened with this whole Donovan Edwards thing? Because I told him I put him in my top five, whatever. And he goes, bro, we had to put all of our safeties down the box because we stopped Blake Corn with our front seven. We could not stop Edwards with our front seven. That's why the safeties came up. Here comes J.J. McCarthy. He's hitting it over the top. Same thing would happen with TCU. I just think that there's something to be said of when J.J. McCarthy had struggles, Edwards was the one that started bailing him out. I get your point about Shipley, and look, I've been joking with you. I think Shippy, Shipley is my number six. Quite honestly, I had a tough time, and I know that I had Rocket Sanders above Nick Singleton. I almost mm -hmm. put Shipley in there above Rocket Sanders, believe it or not, because of the fumbling issues that he's had at times and that he doesn't have some of the big game production. The problem with me with Shipley is every game that I've watched at Clemson last year, now, I will admit, I, I don't watch every play, every snap. Joe, he's going to get hurt. He's going to come out of the game. You, you think because of the play style, you're saying that he's going to get well, hurt? What, well, what's more physical than Michigan? If you're going to say – Well, I'm talking, style, about I'm, talking about I'm talking about Shipley, though. You're saying that well, Shipley – I, I, I get that, but what about – I mean, Edward, Joe, they're going 12 personnel underneath the – you know, under center, and they're running 34 dive. It's not as if mm. that it's any easier on Corum or Edwards or Sanders or any of them. And I get back to, you know, it, it's tough. Shipley's a great athlete. Best overall running back. Okay, maybe he shows that this year with a new offensive philosophy. And, and look, Riley might make him look, and he, he could be the first back off the board because of Riley. And we've seen him do a lot of, the Riley brothers do a lot of good things with running backs. Name a dynamic back that they've had. Right, they've they haven't. A lot of guys that aren't crazy athletes. 
well, that they've turned into they very productive the, players. They've had productive players. They haven't had a guy like Shipley. I just want to see it. The two games that I remember watching, he fumbled, I think, against South Carolina. I mean, he got mm-hmm. rocked against South Carolina. And quite honestly, the two teams that they played that probably the best teams, he crumbled. Like, dude, he crumbled. Donovan Edwards, when he came in against the toughest three-game stretch of their uh, of their year, he didn't. He performed. Joe, he had 500 yards in those three games. I still, though, we need to acknowledge one of the biggest factors for running back success is offensive line play. And if we're all being honest here with, th- with these lists that we've put together, the best offensive line offensive here line is play Michigan, maybe Penn State. Fumbling. I don't disagree with that. But I think that, that Edwards' success is – it's worth acknowledging. You know, it's significant. His impact later on in the season was significant. But he's also one of those guys where if you remove some long rushing touchdowns from his production, I believe his, his yards per carry gets pretty low. He's okay. got a guy Stop that right. has a consistent production. Because that right Ohio there. State game is a good example of that. Stop right there. Do okay. you wanna, can I tell you one of the biggest pet peeves of mine for running backs? Is when people reference yards per carry? No, when people do what you just said and said, well, if you take away their long runs, you can't do that. You cannot do that. You can do that when a guy has limited production and hasn't played and gotten no, as many touches as the rest of guys can. in the list. Let me, why, let me tell you why you can't. You ready? Okay. Go pop in any, any Adrian Peterson highlight film. Okay. Any one of them. He was horrendous at times, and then he'd pop off a long one. You can't take not- it away from him. You cannot take away from Donovan Edwards. Joe, th- th- Joe, I-, I went on Pro Football Focus today and looked at this. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many players were in the box when Donovan Edwards was in the game against Michigan? I mean, against Ohio State? Eight. Damn near. And they could not stop him. I get that. And I think that Donovan Edwards is a good running back. But here's the other aspect to this, too. Why didn't he beat out Blake Corum? Why was Blake Corum the one getting most of the carries? Blake Corum's a dog. The beginning? That's, that's fine. I mean, that's obviously the case because I have him as ranked as my number one running back. I think Donovan Edwards is the best second running back in college football. I don't think he deserves to be in the top five. I think there's a lot of context to his success. Okay. Here's my top five. Why you don't have Quinside, Quinshawn Juckins at number one makes you the biggest Rudy Pooh in the country. Mm. Blake Corum, I, I, I don't know, but Rocket Sanders is just so freaking good at times. I yes. put him at three, Donovan Edwards at four, and Nick Singleton uh, at five. I don't know where you could I, – I, we just had the Donovan – argument i don't know where you could attack me on any of this right i don't i feel like i'm there's not much to pull this apart but i do want to talk about quinshawn judkins and why i placed him at number two look blake Corum, you as we just said is so freaking good his contact balance his footwork his elusiveness the way that he gets in and out of his cuts is fantastic and his vision i think is the best out of any of these guys because he's played the most snaps talking about not gotten, no i'm talking about uh, Blake Corum. Okay. And I, if Corum hadn't gotten hurt at the end of the season, he would have won the Heisman. If he only won. works in high, hand, uh, uh, hand grenades and horseshoes. I, I hate it when people use that. But yes, I understand that. I'm not okay. handing out an award that he didn't win. He was on pace for it, though. If he didn't get, if he didn't get hurt, we would be talking about Blake Corum very, very differently. He is a fantastic running back. And for him to finish and not play as many games, for him to finish with 18 touchdowns and almost 1,500 yards is astronomically good. I agree. I agree. Blake. Cor- so, look, let me add on to your Blake Corum thing, okay? Mm-hmm. I think they have the two – I think that their running back room is the best in the country. Michigan has Absolutely. the best running back room in the country. It's not even close. I think they return the best offensive line in the country – and when you watch them on tape, they are scary good. Everybody says, well, Blake, what about TCU? I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. I don't discount that. Offensively, they didn't suck. 
You know, the, the thing that I, I, I heard the most about Michigan was, oh, no, Jim Harbaugh's offense. And I'm thinking to myself, Joe, we talked about this. They scored 40 points. It's their defense that were Rudy Poos. Yeah. They have the best two backs in the country. They, it, It's kind of scary. I honestly believe they have two top two round running backs right now, which makes them very deadly. Here's why I put Juckins number one over Corum. I already mentioned this. Mm -hmm. He didn't, and I get that he was already kind of hobbled a little, but man, you played and you said you were fine. And then you, you did not, he did not do anything against the best team that he played all year in Ohio state. He did. He did not. He shouldn't do have played though. He really I shouldn't have played. That. I get, I understand that, but Judkins is a different beast. You talk about the mm. touchdowns and you talk about the yards. Judkins had more yards and more and, and two less touchdowns. He's also in the SEC too. Okay. Quenshaw Judkins to me is a more physical, maybe Gibbs. I don't know if he's as fast, but they have the no. same kind of they have the same running style. The way that they stop on a dime and can cut, the way that Jukins can catch the ball out of the backfield is elite. It's not good. You, by the way, did you ever hear the recruiting story with Lane Kiffin and Quayshawn Jukins? No, I know he was a three star. I know that he was very, oh, he, very under recruited. Very under recruited from a small town. So this guy was at a practice, a uh, uh, Juckins high school football practice, raining. I'm talking about pouring down rain. He sees a guy in the stands. He's like, what is this guy doing? Why is this, what is this guy doing sitting in the stands? Who is that Rudy Pooh? Mm -hmm. It was Lane Kiffin. And Lane Kiffin, the story goes, Lane Kiffin said that he was not leaving until Juckins committed to Ole Miss. And because he wow. saw something in him. That is pretty – so, look, we talk about Lane Kiffin all the time. We we rag on him. We talk about his frosted flake, uh, frosted flake haircut, and he gets it dyed and stuff like that, and I'm with you. That's elite. To pull a three-star out of nowhere is, is ridiculous. I just think because Juckins did it in the SEC against – and, look, you've said this before – you said this before. You saw their offensive line and some of their offensive linemen in person, and you thought that they were pretty bad. Yes. So yes. Specifically that, Breaker. Okay, so with that being said. What? Hi. All right, you got a scooter. Bye-bye. He's really excited about that scooter. Yeah, he's really excited <laughs> about the scooter. Huh? You want to see again? Okay, come on. Hey, tell Mr. Joe how many goals did you score today? Four. That's correct. He's a lot. Four goals. <laughs> Dude, can I tell you something? He's more athletic than I ever was. Is he going to be playing quarterback? Are you going to get him you or tight play end? Or do you want to play tight end? Get him long snapping. Tight end. Okay. He's got the personality of a tight end. He doesn't have the personality. Tell me he's running people over in soccer, man. I can see it. Uh, Hold on. Bye. Bye. See you. He's going to be in our tight end rankings in, in 15 years, man. I hope so. <laughs> he, um, he, he got in a little bit of – all right, bye, buddy. See you. He he got in a little bit of trouble. He drop kicked a kid at soccer. It's, oh, my God, that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, what were we that's talking about? That's athleticism, sorry. That, uh, that's, it, like – incredible athleticism that he can no, do that so at that age. He's got a coach. His name, by the way, if you don't know, that's my son, Benjamin. He, uh, his, his coach name is, his first name is Dallas. Mm -hmm. And Dallas wrote a letter to us, uh, I guess a practice or something. And he goes, you know, when Ben's kicking the ball to the goal, he goes, spider man. And like, when he kicks it, he's like screaming. He told, apparently he told one kid, you're doing it wrong. Watch me. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> God, he's, I'm rubbing off on him. Anyway, so what oh, we talking about, Juckins? I just yes. think, Joe, what he's done in the SEC is unparalleled. Look, I went back. So I, I think that you know this, but if, if anybody watched other shows, they know this. So on May 15th, we actually start this tonight, actually, on my other show. Mm -hmm. We start really diving into football, really doing the, the film. I was watching Ole Miss today. 
I went and watched Ole Miss versus uh, Alabama. Okay. Dude, he had 25 carries, 135 yards, two TDs, three catches against Bama. Gets LSU, he had 111 yards, two TDs. Dude, against the best competition he saw, he was just elite. And for that alone, and by the way, he did not play a lot to start the season off. It's not no. like Corum. It's not like Edwards where he was constantly in that rotation. He got those 1,567 rushing yards and was progressed throughout the season, which makes it that much even more ridiculous to me when you when you put it on paper. Yeah, well, first of all, you brought up a really interesting point with Lane Kiffin, and I would actually argue the sign of a, a great coach isn't by bringing in a five-star and them turning into an all-conference player. It's if you can recruit the right three stars and then turn no those doubt. guys into draft picks and to all Americans, all of that stuff. So again, commending Lane Kiffin for what he did here with Quinchon Judkins. I am very big fan of Quinchon Judkins watching his tape and watching him play. I have not admittedly gone as deep as some other guys because right now I'm focused on the 2024 draft cycle is what I'm preparing for. But I think his contact balance is, is fantastic. It, it, you, it, it's elite, dude. Call it what it is. Yes. Good contact balance in college to bounce off of guys and continue moving forward. That's how you rack up large rushing totals like this. I'm not looking at a guy if he can rip off a 50-yard rushing touchdown one game and then finish with 100 yards, cough, cough, like Donovan Edwards. I love the guys like Quinchon Judkins that just keep what are you falling talking forward. About? He, had 100 getting... yards and a, he had 200 <laughs> yards and a half. I'm just, I'm, I'm just giving. Wait, who are you talking about with, with Donovan Edwards? Edwards had 200 yards and a half. What are you? I'm just joking back to the original point that I made that his production is a, slightly inflated by a couple long runs. I don't want to go backwards here. My main point is, is that guys like Quinshawn Judkins that can go and pick up an eight yard gain, a ten yard gain. That's lethal. That's hard to stop. And he's exactly that football player. And I think your point about their offensive line stinking, it, it's really impressive for him to produce the way that he did. My only thing, why I drop him slightly, I think out of all of these guys and out of, out of some guys that didn't make this list, I think he's the least athletic. Just by what? a slight, more, just slightly. I'm Are not saying he's not. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not saying he's not an athlete. I'm just saying that some of these other guys are a little bit more explosive than him. He has slightly. more yards in the SEC than any guy on this it, list. That doesn't have anything to do with athleticism. I'm just talking about that he is a little bit more of a charge forward, power through contact type of a guy. I think he's a good, power great Power is forward. not a part of athleticism? I knew that you were going to hate my me making that statement. It's just, it's slightly. I think a, a, a couple of these guys are a little bit more explosive than him. That's all I'm saying. All right, I'm just going to let you know, and I know that you know that I say this from my, from the heart, and I really do yes. mean this because I yes. love it. That is the worst take you've had on this show. That's that's not a bad take. He was a three-star recruit. I think most people who would watch him would agree that he's not an just elite athlete. Just because some Rudy Poos don't go to Mississippi doesn't mean anything. I'm saying he's a good athlete. I'm just saying he's not an elite athlete. Is strength athlete. an athletic tool, yes or no? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, he makes Blake Corum look like cottage cheese. Okay. I know we're not going to agree on this. My only point is that he's just not an elite athlete. He is a great athlete. He's one of the best athletes at the position in college football, but he's not in that elite category. He's very well-rounded. That's what gets you to the league. That's what gets you 1,500 yards is being well-rounded. You, you're the guy that would have put Derrick Henry at like – a third round pick, wouldn't you? No, he's a he's a f athletic freak. I, by the way, so this is a good transition here. I would have, I didn't rank that draft class. I would have had Derrick Henry as running back one for one plain and simple reason. Guys like Raheem Sanders that are freaking massive. I'm call him Rocket. Him. Let's not use his biblical name. <laughs> Rocket Sanders. I don't know what it is. I'm obsessed with guys that are just massive running backs. I don't know. I don't know why. I can't explain it. But being 6'2", 240 pounds, a bowling ball, hammer of a running back with his type of speed, it's I'm so entertained watching him. I had I almost didn't put him on this list for some of the things that you brought up, but I had to put him on there, man. He is he is so freaking good. Yeah, insane. okay. I, I'm with you on that. He's just so freaking good, dude. Yeah. He, and you know what's crazy about Rocket Sanders? Being the size that he is, 
you wouldn't think he's as fast as he was. No. The only thing that I worry about with Rocket Sanders is, dude, when they play the tougher opponents, he folds. He folds. Alabama, LSU, yeah. Old Miss, doesn't matter. He folds. Now, that could that be is a legitimate something concern. to do with play calling because you know how I feel about Kendall Browse. I think Kendall Browse is a Rudy Poo um, at times. But, man, look, bottom line is he had 40, 40, uh, 1,400 rushing yards last year. He only had 10 TDs. Only had 10. And – Well, to be fair, why, for his running why, style – Well, why is he getting subbed out in the red zone? Why, that's, what did they know about him getting ru- uh, subbed out in the red zone that I don't? Well, maybe it's because, again, his running style, he's not somebody who's going to break off like a ton of like super long carries. Maybe he gets to the red zone and he's gassed and they got to pull him out. But the other aspect of this, I'd be curious to know the – I was about to pull that, that comment up. I'd be curious to know – put that on a T-shirt. I'd be curious to know what the – drive success for Arkansas was towards the latter half of the season when KJ Jefferson went down because oh, it was horrible. They, yeah. They weren't moving the ball. They weren't but getting to the red zone. So his touchdowns being low. Well, they had KJ Jefferson and rocket Sanders against Liberty. Yeah. Eh, I, I know that that's, that's not the best example, but to see the way that they played when he was not on the field, I, like I understand why he didn't have more rushing touchdowns. If they had the same momentum as the previous season, I think he goes for 15 or 16, absolutely. Rocket Sanders had 17 carries for 60 yards against Liberty. So, again, goes to my to my point. The teams that they lost to, he folded. And I think that there's just something to be said about that, Joe. I, I think that there's something to be said about that. You know, I love Leonard Fournette. I loved Leonard Fournette when he was coming out. I loved him at LSU. Yeah. I mean, we saw what he was, but people criticized him when he couldn't get yards against Alabama, but nobody does that for Rocket Sanders. Why? Because one guy's at LSU, and one guy was the number one overall recruit in the class, and the other guy is Rocket Sanders. Y'all Rudy Poos. All right. I will say Rocket Sanders is going to be a really damn good pro. Final. Uh, Nick Singleton, before we transition. Spark plug. I, I think that yeah, – I agree the, with that. That, the, that's he, literally what I wrote down on here was spark plug. He might have been the best true freshman running back. Or just be, – sorry, let me rephrase. Best true freshman in college football. I, think I don't – why, why do I want to put him at five, though? You know, on the running me, back list? So I, well, I feel like Nick Singleton is the guy that I could put anywhere on this list and you can't debate it. No. I think he fits at five for the reasoning of him having the less, the less exciting stat line. Only 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. He also didn't get as many carries as I think a lot of people would have hoped for. That's right. Split in time. Well, he's going to get a lot of carries now with a with a young quarterback. Yes. And I think they have the offensive line to do it. But you said best freshman in all of the country. Harold Perkins says hello. Okay. That's a good point. <laughs> I'd say they're close. I would say they're close. Not not even remotely close. <laughs> Come on. You think that there's that much if separation draft, between Harold Perkins and Nick Singleton? If the draft happened today and you had to pick Harold Perkins or Nick Singleton, where are you that's going? Irre- that's irrelevant because I'm not picking a running back over an edge rusher. Well, he's not an edge rusher now. If you'd be listening to my show, you would know that he's moved to the inside and on third downs, he's going to be on the outside. If we removed positional value, I would say that they're not that far off. I would say Harold Perkins is higher. You, you see, here's the thing with you: you like to say, "Well, if you just pull this away, if you pull, I'm, pro- I'm producing an pull, argument. If you pull this massive thing away, wait, no, 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 no. Positional value, yes, positional value is massive. But like, if we're just talking purely two football players, who was better? I think that Harold Perkins is, but they're not that far off. That's okay. not an egregious statement. All right. It's pretty egregious. All right, let's transition to this, though. Um, AAC commissioner Mike Arsco came out with a pretty long article and letter to college football. I don't know if you guys saw this, but we'll, we'll paraphrase for you. He came out and wrote one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. It's literally this one of the more stupid things I've ever heard a commissioner say. 
in his letter or rant or whatever you want to call it, he said that he wants the elimination of the Power Five label. It was the media that did it. No, the media didn't do it. It was literally the pre- 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 the whole reasoning of why the playoffs started is you talking about Power Five opponents. If you win your league, a Power Five opponent, you could get into one of the four spots. He said he wants to eliminate that. He also says that Power Five driven by the media when they don't know what they're talking about. That's interesting because we didn't come up with that. He says it's wrong for conferences. This is where he lost me in this Mm -hmm. article. He says it's wrong for conferences that have and make more money than us for them to feel like they're superior to us. And then he would basically go on and say other AAC, uh, other conferences beside the AAC, ACC, Big 12, SEC, Pac-12, and Big 12, all other conferences are pretty much Rudy Poo. Buddy, you're Rudy Poo too. So I don't even know why I need to be mentioning this guy. What what are you talking? What is he talking about here? That statement, this is a capitalistic environment. No you're doubt. competing for being the best conference, the best football teams. And you just mentioned that the AAC makes less money has less talented players, has less talented football programs. I love watching the AAC. I'm going to sit here and say that. I played at an FCS football program. I appreciate the group of five. I love to talk about them. But to sit here and complain that the quite literally better conferences, the better companies think that they're superior than you when they literally are is ridiculous. That's like me being at Rhode Island and saying, what, why why does why does Alabama think they're better than us? Because they are. Because they are. What are we talking about? This is the most whiny bullshit I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, it's pretty, it's pretty bad, man. It's pretty bad. Like I don't even, and he contradicts himself. Right? Like he contradicts himself in this letter. Listen. Okay. I don't mean this in a wrong way, but I also believe that we take commissioners from the group of five their words a little too much yeah like, i agree with that you know like the your boy out in the big 12 you guys out in the pac 12 it's not our fault that your conference is getting poached you can whine all the live long day you can whine about this whine about that you know who doesn't whine the big 10 and the sec they don't whine and for what it's worth for what it's worth the ACC, when they were met with things head on, you know what they did? They started shutting people up and, and making threats and telling Sankey, go ahead and do it and see what I do to you. That's what elite dudes in, in a capitalistic society do, like you mentioned. I don't want to hear about Mike or Esco. Why, why do I need to hear about the AAC's got their feelings hurt? Oh, no, they got their little feelings hurt. You're not a good fucking conference. Sorry for the language, but you're not fucking good. I said it again. They're not fucking good. You might have to edit that part out, but they're not. But, okay, here, here's the other aspect of this, too. Is Are that, you going to have to edit that out? Did I do something wrong? No, 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 no you're good. Okay, it's TV it's, 14. I get three F words. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. you got to – it's not FCC regulated. But, Blake, here's, here's one thing that you just brought up there. Is that for them to complain is such a ridiculous way to handle this. Because this is a complaint. This is a, a penned complaint to the public. This isn't a, a declaration of, like, we want to be taken more seriously. And, look, if you want to change the public perception, put out better products. Spend more money on trying to get more bigger recruits to your to your football programs. And also right. maybe boost your social media presence. There's so many different ways to improve the outlook on the conference. But to pen a public complaint is the most sorry, soft approach to handling this. You know what other conferences did, other small football programs that moved their way up? They busted their ass. They spent decades working their way up. This conference wasn't even a thing. It was was it, five, ten years ago? I mean, basically, didn't they take the Big East, or what did they take? Yes. It was the Big East, and I think part of the ACC. No, I I don't even remember, but I know it was most of the Big East. I I, I mean, Joe, can I be real with you? I don't – I. I don't know if I can um, 
I don't know if I can name all the teams in the AAC. I, I really don't. Uh, I mean, and they got poached, dude. Look, the Big 12 poached them. It, it, what's crazy about this is he thinks that, oh, we're a part of this too. No, you're not, because why did Cincinnati go to the Big 12? Why did Houston go to the Big 12? Why are teams going in the Big 12? You're not because your conference is horrible. You don't generate the money that even the Big 12 does, and the Big 12 is losing their two biggest superstars in Texas and Oklahoma. It's You're just... not making the money. Hey, you, Joe, I mentioned earlier about Tulane. You know why Tulane's talking to Pac-12? And this isn't a rumor. Like, I, I, I don't say this lightly. That This isn't just a little rumor that I'm throwing out there. It is actually happening. I know for a fact that Tulane is talking to the Pac-12, and now the Big 12 wants to get involved in this. You know why Tulane would, don't want to be in a group of five? Because they know they could beat USC, and they could get paid more money for it. Yes. And so, it, it, look, it is what it is, man. I hate it for you. You know, I hate it for you, little guy, but – you right, know, it's it, like that's my whole big thing, and I, I know that we don't even really need to sit here and fully pick this thing apart because, like, we're we're saying the same thing here. It's that if you want to work out of that stigma, you have to put in the work to do it. For how short of a period of time this conference has been around, and honestly, to leapfrog to to be around for such a short period of time, and then leapfrog all of the other low level G five programs and conferences to do that, that's an accomplishment. You just want inclusion and it's to set up your teams to then go to the playoff and say you want two teams that are so or that's not a ridiculous statement, but like you want the ability to have more than just the qualifier in. You really want to set up your teams to get smoked because that's what's going to happen. Well, here, here's the problem with that. Here's the only problem. Mm -hmm. They're not. Okay. I get, the, I get, I get. I'll, the, here's the only thing I'll defend him on. Okay. Tulane's beating Kansas State and USC. But Cincinnati, you usually, Cincinnati is getting to a playoff. You you can really realistically only produce one good team. I the agree. The second with that. best team is going to have that. a significant gap. That's my kind of my whole point. Well, I, I don't mean this in a wrong way for about but for about a 10 year stretch, the only thing the Big Ten could do was produce one good team, and that was Ohio State. Uh yes, yes, but the the difference between how badly they'd get beat by an SEC team, uh, uh, the second best team in the Big Ten is far different than what the second best team in the AAC would do. I agree with showing that. Showing up. I agree with that. I, I agree with you. All right, you let's wrap this up with this. Um, Jalen Carter situation, yeah. the car accident. Um, listen, so if you missed it today, <clears throat> the University of Georgia is getting sued um, because they had a staff member that was a part of the wreck. Joe, they're going to lose. Georgia's going to oh, lose. Absolutely. They're, they're going to have to settle – they have a staff member that was driving players. They got they got in a high speed or, or they got into a, a race. She crashed. They died. Um, they're gonna lose. And as someone as a as a person that has two children, look, man, I I don't want to profit off of my. God bless it. Knock on wood. I don't even want to mm. think about this. I don't want to profit off of my uh, the loss of one of my children i would want georgia to pay though i i would want to make them pay you Absolutely. have a staff member that was driving and my my child died i want i would want to make them pay that's just me that's just me i almost wouldn't even be surprised if they don't try to make an effort to settle the university well, i don't know why well, i don't know why they why they're not trying to do that now like i, I don't even know why this had to get out in the public yeah. Um, maybe to make a statement, but I'm sure, I'm sure part of it too, is like to that point that they do want to make a public statement about this. They, it, it realistically, I mean, honestly, it shouldn't go uncovered. It's, it's been a really significant issue that I almost feel hasn't gotten enough attention. 
proper attention. Well, I mean, it's gotten a lot of attention now. I mean, Jalen Carter, the whole Jalen Carter thing's gotten yeah. a lot of attention. But that's like, in a way, the wrong attention. We were focused on the draft prospect. That was the reason why that was under sort of so much of a microscope. I, 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 I agree with you, but like I said before all this, and a lot, some people, and I got ripped on this a little bit, God bless it. But if the young, the, the, the lady that died, the lady that was driving and passed away, Joe, if she would have not passed away, she would have been charged with vehicle, yeah. vehicular manslaughter. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I, I mean, she's a Georgia staff member. And so it's this very sticky situation. And, pe and, and people, pe when there's a death, people act in different ways. You know, like the Brandon Miller thing. Like people mm. were like, oh, he was at a, a, a crime scene of a death. And you know what? The only reason that people didn't say anything about Brandon Miller is because Brandon Miller's, thank God, still with us. But listen, there are just so many different avenues and ways that we can go up on this. Jalen Carter did not make her do what she did. She could have said no. She's old enough. She's a yeah. staff member. So stinks. I hate it. But I don't even want to think. I don't even want to remotely think about it. Let me tell you a story, though. Uh, when we brought our children home, both of them, both of them. Oh, well, mm -hmm. not so much with Jewel the second time. Cause I've done this before. Uh, but let me tell you this, dude, when we brought Ben home, I was driving like this. <laughs> I was so scared. Oh, I bet. Oh dude. I was so scared. Well, I, I went 60 on the, on the interstate. I was just like, <laughs> get over, get over. Just pass me. I'd yeah. probably be taking back roads, man. I still can't even think about having kids. It's back roads crazy. actually are where most of the deaths happen and traffic accidents. That's a good point. So, all right. Great show. What do we, I know we, we might just in case, like, even if we did Saturday, I think what Joe and I are going to do, we talked about this a little, we're going to start breaking down some teams. Got, Joe, yeah. we are 20 days away from kids reporting back and starting spring, uh, starting summer football. Nuts. We're here. It's oh, so God. close. Thank God. My body is so ready. <laughs> My body is so ready. Pause. No pause. There's nothing, there's nothing to pause about being ready for oh, football. Damn right. Who's winning the national championship? Go. Not LSU. I'm okay with that. Who do you think? I, I mean, I'm okay with you saying that. Who do you think is going to win it? I don't even – I don't even uh, – man. I haven't even had enough time to really think about it. I – it's probably going to be there Georgia. A clear cut team. I don't think there is, but I think if if somebody with the scheduling that they have, it's probably going to be Georgia. Georgia or Michigan. Oh God! See ya. <laughs>